Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we will be finding out the indices for the directions in cubic unit cell. As you can see, we have a cube right here and we have a variety of directions in it. It's A, B, C and D. This is the direction A. As you can see, here we have another direction which is B. Then we have this direction which is D and we have this last direction here C so there are different kinds of directions in there and we'll be finding out the Miller indices and we'll see a general method for finding out the Miller indices of directions in cubic unit cell and that method is applicable everywhere okay if you learn it it will become really easy for you to do the rest of every problem okay so let's quickly get started with direction A and first of all we should know the steps that we are gonna follow in order to find out the Miller indices of directions in cubic unit cell these steps are followed in finding out the indices inside a cubic unit cell while the steps in finding out the Miller indices or Miller Bravis indices in case of uh, hexagonal crystal system is different. Okay, so this method is applicable for directions inside a cubic unit cell. So let's see these steps and we'll understand them more deeply when we'll be applying them in, you know, while finding out the indices for A. So let's first uh, have a look on these steps. The first step is to define the coordinate system. As you can see on the screen, it's to define the coordinate system. It's really important step. And this coordinate system that most of the time what happens is that whatever direction and cube is given to you, they have already defined a a coordinate system for you so you don't have to this coordinate system that they have defined works really well in every case okay you can choose any point as your origin that's totally up to you but this point works really well this problem they have used that coordinate system as well so i'll be using it to find out the indices in all these directions so this is the x direction you can see here this is the y direction here and vertically upward is the z direction you can see so um, this is the coordinate system they have already defined it and sometimes they do not define it for you so you have to define it really first quickly first thing is to do to define the coordinate system the second step is to find out the tail coordinates we know that this is the graphical representation of a direction and it has two main components one is its tail okay this is its tail and the other is its head here so we should know the coordinates of its tail as well as its head so the second step is to find out the tail coordinates and the third step is to find out the head coordinates so we can see here in a direction there is a tail and there is a head so they are these two points and we will be finding out their coordinates with respect to the origin okay we'll see how to find it and it's really easy the fourth step is to subtract the tail coordinates from head coordinates and after doing that the numbers you have got they should not be fractions if they are fractions remove those fractions and there is another thing to check that is to reduce it to a least integer we'll understand it when we will be doing it okay so these are the major steps and let's quickly get started with direction a so that you may uh, know what's uh, happening in here so the first step was to define the coordinate system that is already defined that's fine now we have to find out the tail coordinates now what does coordinates mean coordinates mean that what motions we have to do along x y and z direction to reach to that point whose coordinate you are defining 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 for example tail coordinates mean that what motion starting from origin you have to follow you have to make to reach tail okay and these motions should be along x y or z directions all right so starting from origin we can see here this is the origin and you must be wondering that while finding out the coordinates as you can see there are some numbers that we give to the coordinates that is one half one by four so how we decide that when to take one as the coordinate when to take half when to take one by four so there is a simple rule for that purpose let's learn it and how you are gonna decide that what uh, value you should assign to it for that purpose what we do there is a simple rule that is applicable in every situation whether it is hexagonal cubic or whatever it's like whenever you are moving from one corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell parallel to the axis directions which are parallel to only one axis direction at a time okay 
not in other direction doesn't make any angle with other direction only one direction then it's if it is one corner from one corner to the other corner then this motion will be taken as one for example if this is the corner of the unit cell and you moved to the other corner of the unit cell along x axis direction this direction is parallel to x direction only and there is no relation with y and z there should be a relation with one direction only okay the motion should be along one direction only so this motion is taken as one because it's from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction that rule is general okay remember it and understand it it will help you and avoid and make you able to avoid any kind of confusions all right so uh, this is one now even if uh, starting from this point i move vertically upward to the other corner of the unit cell which is this point okay this motion will be taken as one because i moved from one corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell along the z direction only okay so uh, similarly uh, what are other odds for example starting from a region if i move to the other corner of the unit cell like this okay in this case i move from one corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell but this length is not taken as one the reason is it is not parallel to x direction it's not it's not parallel to y direction no it's not parallel to z direction as well so it's not parallel to any direction it should be parallel to one direction at at a time okay either to x to y or to z it should be make, it shouldn't be making any angle with any other uh, direction so that is why this is not taken as one it will not be taken as one and i hope you got it what i am trying to convey you people and when it will be taken as half it's like from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell is taken as one so you'll take half of it you'll divide it in half so this is the half length okay and after dividing it half dividing it another half it's one by four that is how you are going to do it whenever a direction is given whenever the motion you are following make a straight line of one and then decide that what motion you need half so you divide it by half so that you may get an accurate point as much as possible okay so let's find out the tail coordinates i hope you you understand that how we are going to assign numbers to the coordinates okay so starting from origin we'll move one unit along the x direction which is from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell along the x direction so it is taken as one along x direction and then from this point onwards we have to move one unit along the z direction to the other corner of the unit cell to reach to the tail point okay which means that one move one unit movement along the z direction okay so no motion along y direction was needed that is why the tail coordinates will be taken as one along x direction zero along uh, y direction and one along the z direction these are the tail coordinates okay we have successfully found the tail coordinates and it's always so easy okay uh, instant you understand how to assign values to the motion you you have 50 percent understood how to find out the indices okay it's really easy and as you saw that it was really quick as well now now let's find out the head coordinates here is the head point now let's see what motions are needed to reach to that point and um, now starting from origin again starting from origin we'll move one unit along the y direction which is from one corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction which is y direction so it's one along y and from this point onwards we have to move one unit along the z direction to reach to the head point so it's one unit along y and one unit along z and no motion along x was needed so the head coordinates here we can see are really simple that are zero along x one along y and one along z so we have calculated here the head and tail coordinates and let's apply the fourth and fifth rule and we'll be at the end of our solution okay so let's do that here are the tail coordinates and head coordinates and we'll be doing this operation on it which is head minus tail coordinate and for that purpose we'll be subtracting the x coordinate of tail from the x coordinate of head 
y coordinate of tail from the y coordinate of head and z coordinate of tail from the z coordinate of head separately okay for um, all independent directions we'll be doing it separately this is for x this is for y and this is for z and uh, h minus t okay and we can see here it's zero x is zero here and it's one so zero minus one which is equals to minus one okay in y we'll do the same operation and here the same operation will be done here we have one head minus tail which is zero one minus zero is one so this is one and here we have head one minus tail is one which is equals to zero so what number we got so far is minus one one and zero we can see here that there is no fraction involved here if there would have been any fraction involved for example if there would have been a one by two one zero for example if any fractions are involved then we have to remove those fraction by multiplying with the suitable digit or else if they could be reduced to some lowest integer form for example it's four to zero if we divide all of the mirror indices by some positive number then it could be reduced to a lowest integer form okay so you have to ensure that both of these things are checked okay the, they are reduced to the least integer form and there is no fraction involved so the last digit after subtraction you get will be the indices okay the final indices since there is no fraction involved and they cannot be reduced further on so this is these are the final indices we can represent uh, minus one by one and a bar over it this is minus one representation then we have one without any separation we write them all together enclosed in these square brackets okay so these are the miller indices of direction a these are the miller indices of direction a and uh, you don't need to write any commas in between them that will be wrong okay that is wrong in miller indices notation you never put any comma in between all right you only put uh, spaces when you have for example when you got miller indices to be 23 2 and 1 okay to show it what you have to do is to it's like to 23 to 1 then you have to put space in them okay so that they could be differentiated and keep one other thing in mind whenever you are reducing them or removing the fractions make sure that the thing that you are dividing or multiplying is positive never multiply or divide a negative number it's not allowed only positive numbers are divided and multiplied here so this is the final result now let's do it for the direction b besides this problem we'll be also finding out the indices for other kinds of directions in some other problem okay i'll upload it later but it will be available on my channel so stay tuned and please subscribe if you are looking for such kind of videos because i upload all kinds of problems from statistical mechanics solid state physics quantum mechanics mathematical methods of physics and whatnot you'll find most of us problem solution which are made so easy that everyone is praising okay so give it a try you'll not regret and i have also done a ton of videos on finding out the miller indices miller privacy indices for directions in hexagonal unit cell if you are interested in such kind of content please subscribe